Welcome back to Liberty Marksman. I'm Ken, he's Scott, and today we're doing Cerakote. We're going to show you the ins and outs and how to do this stuff. It can be done at home. If you choose to send it out to a, uh, a professional to have it done, we totally understand. But if you're hands-on like we are, you can do it at home. Absolutely. And you have two choices. You can use a bake on, which is what we're going to be doing, if you got access to this an oven. This is the H-Series. Yep. H-Series. And there's also an air dry which if you don't have an oven, well, that might be a great option for you. Yeah, it's also great for scopes and polymers. Yep. But we will say that we have done, you know, polymer uh, handguns before, and it's worked out just fine. You just got to cure it at a lower temperature. Yeah. In fact, let me show you one of the guns that we've already Cerakoted. Yep. We're rolling a picture there at the bottom. Um, but as far as the H series goes, with baking it, it is more durable. Yeah. So that is one thing to keep in mind. As long as you have a way to get it to 250 degrees for two hours, you're good to go. It's game on. So let's take you, let's show you an example first of one we've already done. And then um, we'll head to the shop and show you step by step. All right, so this is an AK-47 that we actually did in flat dark earth. Magpul flat dark earth to be exact. Yeah, with the... Uh, H series, bacon, Cerco. We did the rails and everything where the bolt rides. I'm gonna pop it apart real quick just to give you an idea of how well durable it is. Look at these rails. They are still fully coated. And that is without any lubricant. Yeah, we did our assembly and our test in our mind was to Put this together, test the lubricity of the actual Cerakote by not lubricating any of the yeah. components. Now, we will show you there is one spot here that it will chip. So that's one thing you got to understand. It won't take impacts very well, and that's what happens on the, the AKs when you're moving it into safe all the time. Yep. It will chip. That's just a problem with AKs, and there's nothing you're going to do about when that. You're, when you're rolling this sheet metal edge across the top of your fucking rail all the time, that's on take metal down on metal. assembly. It's just metal on metal. It's going to grind it off. Just like <laughs> just like the safety. But. Just leaves that scratch. Yep, that is what it I is. I haven't seen too many AKs without that same line. Yep. Alright, so. What Cerakote recommends you do is you degrease it in acetone, uh, soak it for like an hour, and then bake it at 300 degrees for an hour. And then, then you can blast it, and then you can go back in, or scotch bright it, whatever you're going to do, and then go back into the acetone, and then bake it again, and then coat. You don't have to do all that. It's real simple. Degrease it with some brake clean for the first step. Then you can go ahead and either scotch bright it or sandblast it. Then what we'll do is we'll go back in the acetone into the oven, then we're ready to paint. So just regular brake clean, hose it down really well. All right, so just make sure you get all the, the problem areas where you know there's gonna be oils and just flush it out. Brake clean's cheap out. Wear gloves if you're, you know, a hipster and you're worried about that shit. And uh, that's it. Blow it dry. As you can see, brake clean dries pretty damn fast. Now let's go blast this thing. Now we're ready to sandblast. We're using 120 grit, grit aluminum ox. Into the blaster we go. When you have a anodized piece, you do not have to strip the anodizing all the way off. If you just rough it up, it'll adhere to it really good. All right, this guy got that upper done. Thank you, sir. And as you can see, we didn't strip it all the way off. We just roughed it up. It's a couple spots where it wore a little thin, but it's not too bad. So this is ready now to be degreased and then go into the oven to be degassed. 
Okay, so at this point we just came out of the sandblaster and you can see all the little pockets are just full of it. So take an air nozzle. You don't want to blow that down. You want to make sure you get in all your detent holes, get them blown out real well. Because after this, they're going in the acetone. Alright, so our for our scope mount, we're going to just use a Scotch Brite. We've already washed it down with the brake clean. So now we're going to cut our large pad into some strips about this size so that we can work it in every nook and cranny and just get that surface roughed up a little bit so you can get it to look something like that. We're not looking to remove the coating because that coating is a great base. Yeah, this is really, really hard, really slick and holding up really well because of scotch right even. You get all your surfaces. And then you're going to blow it again? Rubbed out nice and gray. So that we, we're going to blow it down. And then it's going to go back in the acetone. And then in the oven. Got that all scotch. Give it a quick blow down. Threads all clear. Two clamps. Got the rest of everything else blown down. Into our acetone in this pan we fabbed up. We like sunny side, it's got a certain bite to it. Yeah, it's better than some shit lacquer thinner that we've had. <laughs> oh my god. Most lacquer is not bad, but we have this stuff in house right now that is horrible. I think, I think they added that scent to it. That shit is terrible. Mm hmm. All right, so what you're gonna do here is just soak it and try to flush it out and go ahead and brush it and clean out everything. This is your last chance to get it, to get all the oils out of it. So, cause after this, we're going to the oven and uh, then we're gonna paint. Yeah, we'll let it soak for a good 10, 15 minutes so that with any of the oils or anything or in any of the threads, has the time to loosen up and get out of there. And basically what you're looking for when it comes out of the oven is to see if any of that oil is still leaching out. And if it does, usually you can just dip it real fast and mm -hmm. just in that, with the heat that's residual, well, usually it'll just evaporate it right off and you'll be fine to go. Go ahead. Basically we're just lining them up to go in the oven and dry them. Now you really don't want to get your, your hand oils or anything on them at this point. Um, so once they come out of the oven, you're going to be gloved up, you're going to be checking them for any residual oils coming out. To the oven with the... To the oven. So now we're going to mix the Cerakote. These are your ratios. So here we go, we're going to mix this stuff up. It's uh, We're going to be using a satin finish, which is 18 to 1. I know I've got quite a bit of uh, to do, so I'm going to do a uh, double batch, which is going to be 36 to 2. Just using the Magpul Flat Dark Earth. Ratios are everything here because when you're only however many parts to one, especially if you're going to be coding at different times, you want to make sure you're on the mark. Otherwise, that ain't going to match. And this is the part B, the catalyst, a little screw cap. And it's a little syringe. And you want to keep this one away from the side walls because it's a little thicker. And it tends to take its sweet time coming down the side of the be beaker. No, it's a little thinner than honey. One. Now I am going to warn you, Two. it does kind of smell like a urinal cake. Okay. Wouldn't you say? Yeah, yeah. It's not. It's not a, a pleasant smell. Uh, however, 
It's a lot better than Duracoat. Yeah. But <clears throat> make sure you wear a respirator or at least a face mask because it does have ceramic in it. And once ceramic gets in your lungs, it's not coming out. It's not coming out. All right, you want to make sure you get a thorough mix on it. We usually start with stirring and then we'll just put our thumb over the top and shake it really good. Uh, for cleanup, either lacquer thinner or acetone. Acetone works really good, so... Yeah, don't let it set up in there, though. No, yeah. Let us... You want to clean it up pretty pretty quick. I think yep. it's got a four-hour... It's hour, got a four-hour pot life, four so you do have life. a lot of work in time, but don't yeah. get lazy. Yeah, clean it up before that. Because I did take a uh, armor's wrench that we had coated with Cerakote and uh, soaked that in acetone for about four hours. I mean, it didn't touch it. No, and acetone pretty much takes off everything. Yeah, it just, it'll even take off powder coat, so... You leave it in there long enough, it'll soften it, but it didn't take the syrup coat off. Okay. Right, we'll put we'll it... Go off on. by the gun. Alright, it's time to pull it out of the oven. Everything's dry. Bring it to the bed. All right, so we are using an airbrush. You could use a regular automotive, like a detail gun, but we find that the airbrush works really well. You just take your time. It's supposed to be a thin coat and, you know, don't get any runs. And with the airbrush, it's really easy to control flow, especially if you're not used to uh, painting with a, with a gun. Really light. Just keep putting the layers on. No need to get a run. And once you get a run, you can't wipe it down and then hit it with lacquer. You'll have to wait till it's been baked and then sandblast it down and recoat it. Nice and even coat. You can see he's not putting it down too, too wet. He's not running it off the edge. Be careful when you go down in pockets because it's real easy to put it on to the fish there. Alright, as you can see, Scott's done coating this, so we're going to take it and put it in the oven at 300 degrees for two hours. Alright, so it's the next morning, 
everything's been baked and cooled we just let it cool overnight so there it is in the oven we'll bring it into the war room and assemble and show you what they can look like There you have it. We got two sear coated rifles. As you can see, the process is not that difficult. No. We, we want to just put them together instead of showing each individual piece because it's, it's easier to see how well the different components, even though they're shots apart, will blend together. And the sheen and everything. As long as you keep your yeah, recipe right. the same. We could show you the piece out. of glasses, but to see the whole mosaic makes more sense. There you go. <laughs> but don't be afraid to try it. You know, it's not that hard. And uh, be creative. Make it your own. Think outside the box and screw everybody else. You can always start off uh, doing it yourself with something else. Yeah. I mean, some of our first sample things were the armor's wrench. Or, yeah, or a magazine. You know, or a magazine. Uh, this was uh, one that we shot in the video. This turned out fantastic. Well, that's an 8 mag. Another perfect match color-wise because we kept our, our ratio recipe the same and the ratio the same. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, guys. Stay tuned. We're going to put these things at a test. Plenty more to come. See you around.